Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here, it's lovely to see you. Just for those who haven't met me before, my name is Donna, I am a, quite a new channel, I do junk journals and junk journal related ephemera and just general crafts over on this channel and just, just making a mess and seeing what we can come up with. So yeah, as I said, I haven't been on YouTube very long, so hi, nice to meet you and welcome back to those who um, I have spoken to before. So I've been busy making some envelope, oops, sorry, not envelopes, some photo pockets. So I've been using book pages and a variety of shapes to create mainly circles and rectangles and squares to create um, some some kind of pockets with some see-through aspects to them. I've forgotten to put acetate in there. I've used some circles. This is a square where I have put acetate, the, the acetate at the bottom. And this is a more traditional rectangle type. Okay, so that's what I've been doing over the last few days. So how would we use them? Well, one way I've used this idea is to use it on, let me find the page. Can't find the page, there it is. I've used it on this page here. So I've put it in as a photo pocket. Now if you've been watching my series, my altered, my Woodland Altered Book series, you'll know that I'm doing this book for personal use to put my autumn photos and memories in because it's my favourite time of year. So my plans for this journal is more for photographs, memories, little, I've done lots of pockets where I can fit photographs into. Um, so my idea for this would be to have, I'll just grab something, like a photograph for example, and I can fit it in and I can see my memory there, like that. A bit like a traditional um, slip-in photo album. So that was my idea, thinking behind it initially. However, as I came into making them, um, I came up with different alternatives and varieties. I thought adding some dried flowers and leaves in would be nice and you could just have them on your page as, let me get a page again. You could have them on your page as say, an ephemera pocket. So you might just want that on there and you then might want to put, I should really have something to hand. You might then want to put a large tag inside so that you can see whatever was on your tag and decorated so that would be an idea so there's lots of versatility in them or you could just use them in a traditional way or the way that I have intended my initial one to be and just use it as a photo pocket so that you can see your lovely memories peeking through so I will show you how to go about making these lovely little pockets. So each pocket started off as two book pages stuck together. I then created the gussets on the sides to give it room within the pocket. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Now there are two ways that you can go about doing your gusset. One is the way that I probably prefer and it's just to kind of eyeball folding up. So I fold up a little bit there and I fold each side in and I would probably just get my bone folder there. Just make sure it's a nice sharp fold. And then do the same on the other side. So once I folded both sides in and this side up, I would then get my scissors and snip there, snip 
there. Same on the other side. It just takes that bulk out. So there and there. And then on the top, I would also snip there. And snip there. Another way to make your gussets is to use a scoreboard. Now this isn't completely necessary however when I was trying to do my first ones my pages were still a little bit wet and I was having a lot of trouble folding them over straight. They were bending and wrinkling and they just weren't behaving really so this might be a good option if you your pages are still a little bit wet or if you are having trouble making a straight fold so for the my book pages i scored at and let's zoom you in i scored at on the sides oops not that one on the sides i scored at half an inch so i just got my little thing there and I just gently, rather than doing a harsh, heavy line and risking breaking, I just went gently a few times at half an inch, turned it round to do the other side, half an inch there. As I said, if you've got a different size book page, you can kind of just gauge what size you want to do depending on your book page. But these are just the measurements that I've used. So I did half an inch each side, then on the bottom, I came up to five eighths, which I think is there. I can't really see clearly, but I think it's there. So five eighths. And just did that a few times. I'm left with our score lines there that you can then just quite easily fold. Now, again, I do, even when I've scored, I do sometimes have trouble folding. So I just kind of gently manipulate it up because even with score lines, I can go wrong. And then I just use my bone folder once I've encouraged that line. You could even get your ruler and just pop, pop, pop your ruler there and just hold hold it against your ruler on your score line and encourage it that way i think paper in general book pages can be a little bit temperamental like that because you've pulled them out you may have misshapen them a little bit and then when you especially when you've stuck two together um i think that's maybe where the problems come in but um you know it is what it is so we're going to cut the same again to make those gussets at the bottom then just snip the tops okay and there we've got the base of our pocket ready to go so once my gusset is done and before I do anything else I like to ink around the edge here because I find it easier to see the edge when I'm collaging once it's inked then to create the cutout I just use something to draw around so let me get this out the way there so this is just for example a journaling card and all I did was literally place it where I wanted it now you could go in the middle you could go that way if it fitted I think it might be interesting to kind of have it slightly kind of off center and in the corner there and then I just got my pencil and drew around so I'm not using anything fancy you could, if you have a die cut machine, you could use, and you've got a die cut, this is where you could use your die cuts. I don't have a die cut machine. I've only got a mini, a mini one, which wouldn't obviously fit something of the size I need. So, but this is my option, um, is to draw around something and cut it out. And it works, it works just fine. It works, you know, use what you have. So I simply just put something onto here 
and drew around it and now we're going to cut it out. There's two methods that you could use to cut out. You could use your scissors like this. If I'm using scissors, I fold it gently. I make just a gap in the middle. And then what I tend to do is cut from the center out towards the end okay and then I've just got lots of little bits that I can then just chop off I've not gone straight to the end because I'm going to show you another method in a minute but then you would just get your little bits and chop your little bits off and it makes cutting out so much easier than trying to manipulate your scissors around the other way you could do it and the way I have been doing it is with a ruler and a craft knife. Now, if you're using a craft knife, please, please be so careful. I had an incident a couple of weeks ago with a craft knife. I cut this finger here and I cut it very deeply. You may have seen the video where I was wearing a big plaster. It, it was a really bad cut. I was just, I hadn't, didn't realise that the lid, the lid kind of, it just, it, the blade cut me basically. It took me by surprise. It was a really bad cut. So please, if you are using a craft knife, um, safety first, always. Um, just just be aware of where your fingers are and what you're doing. Um, I, you know, I don't mean to, to patronise. I mean, I know you're all capable of using a craft knife. I just want to reiterate the importance of keeping yourself safe if you're using any type of tool whether it's a craft knife or anything else you're using when you know when you're doing your crafts so the other option is to use a craft knife carefully so and all i did was put my ruler where the line is and go gently over the line a few times to make the cut now this method isn't good if your paper is still wet because all the craft knife does is rip your paper you can see it's made a nice cut there so if your paper is still slightly wet i would suggest cutting it out with scissors because a craft knife is just going to make a mess of what it is you're trying to do so just a few cuts there that should be nicely cut yep it round we're going to cut again along here making sure my fingers are well back on the ruler okay so that should be cut and turn it again and let's just do this last bit times that should be cut yeah lid straight back on so no accidents put that out of the way so there I you just might need to pull a little bit at the edge if it hasn't quite met and there you've got your cutout okay now, one thing to just bear in mind that if you've cut quite low towards the bottom or to the sides, just check to see if your gussets oops, show like this one does and this one does because you just may, might need to cut your gusset down a little bit. But other than that, um, that's all ready to go. So now I will now show you how I go about collaging and covering our base. So I have a big bowl of scraps here in a lovely superhero bowl. So you can guess who I borrowed that from. And I've got various bits of paper, ones that I've already cut up, ones that I haven't. Um, strips of collage paper, strips of tissue. 
um, some coffee dyed paper. So all I've been doing is using my scraps to collage around. Now I'm going to, like I did with the sides, I'm going to ink where I cut out the frame. just so it's visible when I come to collage again it just helps me to see where I need to stick and how big my paper needs to be to fill in those gaps okay so I ink first and then literally all I do is have my glue ready I have a glue book ready, which I haven't got near me, but I'll get. And I have my bits of paper and I just choose something that would fit and stick, stick it down, basically. So I like to leave a bit of a gap around the edge. Now if I show you on, um, let me show you on this one. I just think it looks really kind of framed and finished off with a little bit of that book page showing and it almost look, makes it look like I feel like it's been sewn even though it hasn't I feel like it just gives it that look I don't know why it just does to me I mean it's a personal preference but that's the way I like to do it I like to leave a little bit of a border here and I like to leave a little bit of a border around the center as well so that's a little bit too big so all I would do is just fold it to get an idea of where I want the size cut it off check if it fits which it does and then I've been inking around all the bits so that each individual square or rectangle stands out. I keep doing that, I keep inking my lid, I'm trying to get ink out of my lid. I don't know why. So yeah, I would ink all the way around like this on each individual bit I'm putting on. Then just glue that down in place. Let me grab something. I've just grabbed a spare piece of paper. So Oops, I can glue this. Where I want it. Try and get an even border. I like to try and get an even border between here and here and here ish. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. But that's the way I would start. So I've got that piece there. So I'd have a look what else I've got which those bits are all too big so I'd have a rummage now I've cut it because I've not cut it in the middle I've got very narrow strips so I'm going to have to go for something narrow like this for example that I could put down there now that would fit it only needs to be a very very narrow piece so I'm just going to cut that down And it needs to be more narrow than what, what I think it needs to be. So that I can leave the border that I want to leave. So I'm going to cut that. Okay, now that's probably a little bit too narrow, but could we fit it here? It just about fits there if I do it a little bit smaller. So let's cut it again. Take some of that edge off. It's a bit fiddly cutting paper this thin, but it's fine. It's quite therapeutic just sitting cutting paper. So that, that fits. So I could move that down to the bottom and cover the whole of that length with a little bit of a border like that. And I wouldn't even bother particularly cutting it off. I will I will today, but you could just collage over that that would just fill in that gap there so I'm going to ink around 
even these little bits I ink around so that it's uniform and that it all looks the same because I quite like all these different papers to stand out from one another I think it adds to that kind of patchworky sewn together effect I mean you could sew around these I have a sewing machine but the bobbin fell out before I even learned how to use it so now I've got to learn how to put the bobbin back in and kind of you know work out what to do and then work out how to use the sewing machine um, so I've got one just a little one but I haven't worked it out yet so for the moment I'm not actually sewing but you could do or you, another option would be to collage it all and then sew around that would be another option so I'm going to get this stuck and I want the black bit at the bottom I think Okay, I've got that horrible purple glue, so I'm just going to get some tissue to wipe that off. Okay, so that's that stuck down. So now I need something for here, something for here, and the bottom. So I like to mix and match pattern, more patterned paper with plainer paper. That's probably a bit narrow, too narrow. What have we got here? That's probably about perfect. I wish it was a little bit longer. But I'll show you what to do if your piece of paper that, you, that you're that you using isn't quite long enough. I'll show you the little tip, the little trick that I've been using. So we'll stick that down because I can show you. Oops. I can show you how to fill it in really easy. So I've inked her, oops and stuff everywhere so I've inked around that and just stick that there leaving the same border and I want it right up to there okay I only want the border around the actual edges so what I've been doing if my bits haven't been long enough I've been getting some um, tissue paper or um, this like pattern paper because if you line it up where you need to fill in a space like that it fills it in for you it makes it look like your piece of paper was long enough and it gives it some extra texture and pattern and it's quick and it's easy so that's all I've been doing if my piece of paper hasn't been long enough it doesn't quite fit you'll be able to see better I'll lift it up in a minute I've been getting a piece and overlaying it where I need to fill the gap and then just where's my where's my card there it is then just get in a card I've smudged that one, that's not worked. But you can see here where it's now filled in the gap a little bit. I moved it so it's not worked great, but I can just get another piece because it's only tissue. And I guess it's so it's got a straighted edge. Let's cut, chop some of that off. So that's quite a straight edge there. I could do with the straight edge here. Going to put that there and it will it will just fill in that gap and it doesn't matter overlapping the tissue because you won't be able to tell once it's dry okay so that can go on there like that and now we've got paper which is the right size if, you, if I wanted to, I could always find a tiny little bit here to try and fill that bit in, but it doesn't bother me too much, that. 
So that's one little trick if you're struggling to find something that fits, get some tissue paper and fill it in that way. It's a really good little trick. So I need something slightly wider now to go here. Now that is about the right width, but it's too close to there, but I could put it there and give a nice, nice balance with that one. So I'll do that. I'm just gonna straighten it up. It's a bit wonky. Yeah, that's gonna fit there. So again, an ink all around. Ink all around, stick it down. overlap it a little bit with that one that's not a perfectly straight line that's fine doesn't bother me it's handmade it's not going to be perfect all the time I just want it as straight as I can get it but no one is gonna I don't think anyone would be bothered about a slightly wobbly line so let's just cut that down because that's a nice piece that goes there. Yep, so I'm going to ink around there. around there I'll get that stuck on this is a really good end of um, project thing to do as well you know when you've got loads of scraps left I think I want the darker bit at the bottom so I'm going to push that right up like that leave a border like that and then I just need a little something for there so what have I got so I've got some white there that's just about the right size so I think I will just trim that down trim it straight a little bit of ink around there so even these plain bits, once you've got ink on them, it makes them pop and it, they're just a lovely uh, contrast with the patterns, the pattern bits that you put on. So I, I utilise these plain bits of paper quite a bit because I do like to have some contrast just to calm down the pattern a little bit. I just like to see some neutrals here there and everywhere and I just need a tiny bit for that so let's use a little bit of that's too thin would it fit that way no let's see what I've got have a rummage with me what's that bit I could put a little bit of that there so I just need it about there going to fit. Let's take a bit more off. Bit of ink. Stick it down. Oops. This way. That 
can just slide in there like that. It's a little bit too long, so I'm just going to chop it. Or did I have it the other way? Was it that way? I think it was. Okay, that's just going to go there like that. I'm just going to chop it a tiny bit. Because it is a tiny bit too long on that side. Chop. Ink. Put it back down. Okay, so that's built that back that gap in there. Um, so that's it. That's how I go about collaging um, the the base after the frame has been cut out. And like I explained, the reason I cut the frame out first is because I like to leave a border around um, and it just gives me that nice finish. So now I'll show you how I go about cutting the frame out if it's in a regular shape like a circle or you know some other kind of like a, a cloud shape or something like that. So that's the thing that we, we will do together next. Okay so if you've got something like a circle I would recommend collaging the whole of the base first because as I found out with this one, this was like a trial one so I didn't even really think of what I was going to put on the base. I was just thinking more of what I could do with cutting shapes out. So this was the first one I made and I cut the circles first which meant I then had to collage around the circles which was difficult so what I ended up doing was just letting things overhang so I'd put something on like that and then at the end once it was dry I had to cut around the circles and you can see it's quite difficult the circles became quite jaggedy and irregular I mean it actually doesn't bother me I, I quite like it to be honest but if I'm going to cut if I'm going to use something to cut a circle to make a perfect circle, I kind of want to keep that perfect circle, if you know what I mean. So this one, I didn't have to collage around because I decided not to. But if I wanted a circle in the middle, I definitely would recommend collaging the whole thing first. Now, there's a number of things that you can use to make your circle. One way is to get yourself a circle punch. These work if you want your circle to be somewhere near the top. But obviously you've got restrictions because you, your circle punch will only go in so far. It works from the top, I can get it in. If I was trying to get it here, I don't know if you can see, but I can't get it all the way past that gusset that fold the fold here so I would be cutting into my gusset there the same if I was going from the bottom and the same if I was going from that side so with my hole punch this is a two inch hole punch I can only get in from the top a certain distance so that's got its restrictions it works but it's got its restrictions to it the other thing that you can do is I've got a nifty little contraption that I got from the works it was about 2 dollars so it wasn't overly expensive and what it is it's like a compass but instead of having a pencil to draw a circle it's got a blade to cut a circle so you take the safety off you take the safety catch off there and your ruler moves up and down so you can gauge what size you want your circle to be and what you do is you put it on your page like that and you draw you cut round it that way and it creates a circle anywhere on your page and you don't need to worry obviously you need to get it in so that you don't cut your gusset off but you don't kind of need to worry if your hole punch is going to reach so that's another option always put the safeties back on that's another option and a third option is to just get a circle have I got anything round and um, I've got this Duff Adonna was my Christmas my birthday present last year get a circle 
draw around it and cut it out. So there's various ways you can go about it. So I think what I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my hole punch at the top and then I'm going to show you this and I'm going to make a circle somewhere down here and make something along the lines of this. So let's get our hole punch. I always do it upside down so I can see what I'm doing. And I think I'll do it kind of about there. I'm sorry, I got distracted, my doorbell went so I had to pause the camera. So I've cut that out with the circle punch. Now for down here, I'm going to use this little contraption. So I'm going to take the safety off. Again, if you're using anything like this, please be careful and look after yourselves. Um, Oh, on this little thing, always move the ruler. Don't try and move this because it's it's really stiff and you could make like a sudden movement and cut yourself. So move your ruler if you've got something. I'm going to do it about, I'm going to make it quite large. I think I might do it on five centimetres and just see what happens. So you put your, you put your thing in. I've only done it on a book page before, I've not done it on a collage page. So I don't know how well it's going to go through the thickness. But you just go round like you would do if you were drawing a circle with a compass. I'm going to go round a couple of times to make sure it's cut through. Keep your fingers out of the way. Let's see if that's oh it's worked okay there you have your circle now it's smaller than what I thought and I was hoping it was going to be kind of over here a little bit but that's fine I can work with that so that's one way that you can do it let's get all our safety things back on so that's another thing that you can use um we could do something interesting and put a really little circle here couldn't we so you could use a circle you've already got but that's too big let me see if I've got something that I could draw around. Washi tape. Okay, so I'm going to draw around a washi tape. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to draw around. And I'm just going to cut around that with scissors. Oops. I'm get my little scissors. Make a snip. Oh, these are getting stiff. And then I'm just going to cut around that circle. I'm going to try and move the paper rather than the scissors. And stay as close on the line as close on the line as I can. To cut that out. I'm sorry, when I'm cutting circles, I don't speak. Because <laughs> I have to concentrate. So, that's that cut out. So we've got quite an interesting little um, array of circles there, haven't we? Which I'm sure would look really interesting with maybe a little flat, dried flower in here. And then you, we could make a tag where you've got something showing. I think that's super cute. I might even, and obviously keep these that you cut out because you can do something with those. That's a good one to so keep those. I might even do a tiny one here and I might use this to cut it with. And I might do a little one just in this corner. Would that, wait, would that fit? I think it would fit. So let me, that's gonna to be too low. That would fit, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut one. I'm just gonna do it. Now I've learnt as well, it's better to, see I did that wrong, I moved my paper. It's better to move the thing around because if you move your paper, you'll rip your hole and it won't keep it centred. So always move the compass. Now I'm having trouble there. Let's just cut a circle. Yeah, that was my fault because I moved the compass. I moved the paper instead of the compass. So 
so let's just cut a circle here because I think that might look quite cute having a little peeky hole down there okay <laughs> not the best circle can I um let me just sketch out the shape there so I can get a little bit closer to the actual shape I'm aiming for. Again, I can't speak. I can't speak when I'm cutting circles. Especially this type of circle, which is more of a blob. Right, that will have to do. So I've kind of, I've got a kind of circle there, but I actually think once that's inked around, um, that won't that it won't matter too much. But just to show you the different types of things that you can do, once you've got your acetate on there, um, it's going to make a really interesting pocket, and it'd be nice to put like a six by four photo in, so you can just see different parts of the photo and then obviously when you take the photo out it then you can it kind of reveals the whole thing so that's what we've got so far so we've done the circles where you need to collage it all first then cut your circles out and we've done the regular shapes where it's going to put the safety on there We've done the regular shapes where you can cut it out first if you want, if you prefer to leave a border, or collage the whole thing and then cut your, your square or your circle. So the next job is to cover our spaces with something of your choice. So for my frames, I have been using this. They are called self-laminating cards. It's on an A4 sheet. And one side is just kind of really thick laminated material and the other side is the bit which is sticky. Um, so I have been used taking bits of this off and using it to cover my, uh, my frames. So just measuring how much I need and the reason I'm using it is because it's nice and strong. Um, it's not cheap this stuff, the reason I've got it is because I bought it for another... I bought it for another project that I was doing um, as, and so I've got it so if you don't have something like this you could just use a, a normal lamination sheet you could use you could use uh, the envelope for, you know like the, the material they put in like junk junk mail envelopes you could use some acetate you could use some greaseproof paper Anything really that's kind of either see-through or transparent would work. So just have a look at what you've got. For this particular one, I'm using this. And there is another reason why I've chosen to use this, which I will come to in a, a little while. But for now, what I'm going to do is fill this window, cover this window with some of this. Okay, so that's the next step. I'm just going to cut a piece and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've got a piece here big enough to cover this top circle and this is how I go about gluing it on to hopefully make as little mess as possible. So I've been using this tacky glue which was recommended on Amazon. I'm really impressed with it. It holds really well and it's got a really fine nib and comes out, the glue comes out really fine. So what I've been doing is going around the paper and I haven't been going too close to the space. So I've been keeping the glue, let's just get it out, I've been keeping the glue quite a distance away and hopefully you'll be able to see how fine the glue comes out because you really don't want a lot to do this. If you use a tacky glue it's going to be tacky enough to hold without putting lows on. So I go all the way around, leaving a gap, and then I just put a bit kind of here as well. And then what I do is get get the acetate, place it where I need it, 
and then I move away <laughs> and I don't touch it. I leave it there for a good few minutes, just letting the glue work. Just let the glue attach itself to the acetate before you do any kind of moving around because if you start to press it down, you can move your acetate and smudge the glue all over the place. If it's not kind of tacked, that acetate will move. And that's how you end up with smear marks all over and it just gets really messy and untidy. So I, I just leave it like that. Let the glue do its job. And then because I haven't gone too far, it, I've got no glue spilling into these gaps because I've kept it a good distance away. So I'm just going to leave that just for the moment. I've got a tiny bit that's come out there. So I'm just gonna get rid of the bits that the acetate hasn't covered, but I'm not going to touch that just for the moment. I can now maybe just give it a tiny bit of a squeeze, but I'm not gonna do any harsh going over with my card or my bone folder or anything like that. I'm just going to leave it. So I have covered each circle with the first part of the self laminated sheet, the bit that isn't sticky. So I've covered it like that. I did my little method of just adding a bead of glue and then walking away and leaving it. So I've, I've managed to have minimal mess there. The circle at the bottom was really annoying me. So I just patched it up. I just put a piece of paper over it and some book page over it at the back and that was an easy fix. So things can always be fixed if, you know, if things go wrong. I've inked around these two circles because I realized that I forgot to do it around there. It just makes it stand out a little bit. So I'll probably just get a cotton bud or something like that to finish that circle off there. So the next part I wanted to show you was the other reason why I use the self laminating sheets. Now, if you remember, I said, there was, and it's not there now because I've used it all, but on this side, attached to this bit is just a normal laminating sheet. On the back here is the sticky bit. So if you were laminate, laminating without heat, you would take this off, put your thing in the middle and close it back down again. So the reason why I like to use this is when I'm using dried flowers because it self laminates the flower into the, the space. So I've cut a piece of the sticky side big enough to cover those two circles because what I thought was a nice idea would be to get a dried flower or a dried leaf and have it coming across both circles like that. So this is my trick, this is what I do. I get it where I want it and I'm sorry if there's a lot of glare, I can't really avoid it too much but I get it where I want it like that and I don't move it well that's moved a little bit then I get some really small washi tape and I just stick it where I want it first like that I'll just check it's in the right place yeah and I stick it down and I just use that washi tape where's my bone folder just get a bone folder or something and just Put that down. Now we don't need to use any glue on the front of these on these leaves. You don't need to dab any glue onto there at all, which again will cut down the mess that creates, and it will also mean that you won't see any blobs. You know, sometimes it just doesn't dry clear and it can look a bit messy. You won't see that because we've kept it in place with some washi and we're going to use the sticky side of the laminating sheet to laminate it in. So all we're going to do now, and I need to find my bone, there it is. I need to find my bone folder first. I'm just going to make sure the washi is nicely stuck down in between either side of that branch. I'm gonna take the sticky side of the laminating sheet I'm going to place it over like that, okay, and I'm going to burnish it down. Now this does two things, it sticks your flower in place so you don't need any other glue other than the tiny bit that we've put around there. And it also, when we turn it over you'll see, just go over your leaf 
you might be able to see it now. I'm sorry if I'm wobbling the camera. We're going to burnish both sides down like that and you'll see that it's laminated. Can you see where it's laminated the leaf around the edge? You might not be able to in this light, it might not be the best light. But it basically laminates your whatever you've put in it into that space. So it's not going anywhere. And that is a really good way of avoiding using unnecessary glue. Now, if you don't have these, you could just glue it in place. You could put a dab of glue on the petals and stick it down. And hopefully, you know, if it's a glue that you trust and a glue that you know, and you know it dries clear, that would work. Or you could use another piece of just another piece of clear acetate over the top and stick it and that would secure it in. I just I like doing this because I feel like it I feel like that flower isn't going anywhere. Because it is properly actually laminated. Another option is to actually laminate laminate it on a normal laminator. So put your flower in, push it through your laminator and stick the whole lot on the back. So there's different options. I'm obviously using this because it's what I've got. Um, I've either got a lump, I've got a air bubble there I think, but not to worry. But that has laminated that flower into there and I'm so sorry if you can't see that clearly and I hope that you can. I'm trying to get it so it's not getting too much glare. So we've got this here which is just a clear pocket and we've got these two circles here which is um, an just an interesting little feature. So what you could do with that now is put something in there like um, a journaling card. It might have a quote on it so you could stick the quote into it so where you could see the, qu the quote coming through like that. You could. There's all sorts of things you can do. I've also just went ahead and covered this frame as well. So this was the frame that we made at the beginning. And I'm just going to leave that one as um, like a traditional type of photo frame where I would just put a photo in into that one. So let's have one last look of how this can be used in a journal. So we've got our pocket here. This is the one we just made. <clears throat> we can stick it onto a page like that. <clears throat> now I'm going to try and be a little bit delicate with this because it still is a little bit wet. <clears throat> So we could stick it down like that. We could have a tag in there somehow so that it shows whatever you want at the front there. You could get a piece of just tea dyed or coffee dyed paper that slips in the back there. So you've got a lovely um, place for a journaling spot where you could slip the paper in and you've got the flower showing, sorry, it's a bit difficult because it's not quite dry. You've got the flower showing through, okay? And then you could just have that lovely plain piece of paper to take out. You could put some vintage ephemera in there so the flower shows through. You could, on the example here, if it fits, this might be a little bit too big, but you might have, <coughs> excuse me, a piece of artwork or mixed media that you've done. I well, don't know if this will fit in here. That you could, you could slip in, and you can use to display your artwork like that, which I think actually is a really nice idea. I've got lots of these types card type things and then you can just pull it out maybe put a tab on the top you can pull it out when you want to see the whole thing so you could make a book with a, lots of these frames in and use them to display your you know your mixed media so they're very very versatile you could if you wanted for example this one I think it's beautiful with, with nothing I think it's just beautiful the way it is so you could just Put it on as a lovely pocket. Put a little notch if you wanted to and then you can put whatever you want in there. So lots and lots of uses for um, this little project. So these are some of the ideas 
that I have come up with, pop them like that out of the way, that I have come up with different varieties, different variations on the same idea that can be made and just put to one side ready to be used in a junk journal. How pretty. Just putting something in like that, some of your mixed media work, I just think is gorgeous. Um, yeah, so that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed that. This is the other one, which is just drying. The one where I patched it up. So I'll just show you that one. Okay. Slight, oh no, it's that way, isn't it? Slightly different with it being towards the bottom, but again, I think that looks lovely. You've got lots of space here if you wanted to put a cluster or a label. There's loads that you can do. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me know if you're going to have a go, if you've made anything similar. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care and I will see you soon. Bye.